sorry that took so long. I don't know. Uh, Rev. DJ Razor Slave. Soon. Trademark. Yeah, I, um. I don't know. You, like, go to do something and then. Like, all this other crap shows up and you're like, oh, shit. Uh, well, let me do this real quick. And then I'll. I'll okay, that's, you know. Whatever. We're going. We're rocking. Uh, we're not gonna stop till we hit the beep bop. So um, I just I turned everything on like an hour or so ago, and so now uh, it's heated up enough. I didn't. I don't know if you guys have seen before. The I've complained about this, and a lot and, and a lot of other people do the D. It, it has a drift. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, like, you'll have it at, like, you can start off on negative one, and that'll be the proper team, or not negative one, whatever the hell. Positive one. You could go in a positive one, or one and a half, or something like that. One or two. Basically, I assume those are steps up. And then, you know, you'll be playing, and you're like, oh, that doesn't sound good. And you're like, eh, and then, eh, and then, eh, and then, and then eventually you're at where it's at right now and that it hangs out there for a really long time but I've I've had really long sessions or I've left the thing on or something like that and I tuned it and I'd have to it, it, it'd go the other direction to go into the negative values and I'd have to tune it down to like negative one or whatever so uh, I guess the moral of that story is to turn the thing on and just let it heat up so you can get that sweet spot for as long as you can get away with it there might be a an update. I keep meaning to check if there's some sort of uh, update for um, for the D from Burger. I do remember that they um, when you first got it, that was the first thing you wanted to do was update the firmware because there was some sort of uh, bug. Hey, how's it going, Leslie? Rock and roll. So, yeah, anyways, we're going to tune this bad boy. We're going to tune them both up. Um, stop this kid. And, uh, it's probably the least entertaining part. And then we take away all the beautiful effects. So you just get... Um, let's fix that. Alright. That is sufficiently annoying. So, let's turn it off for a second. So there's the reference tone. It, the D does have a built-in uh, A440. It's pretty cool. So you can put that in and, uh, you know, do what we're doing. Do -do. So it's pretty damn close, like right off the bat. Um, let me see if I can find... There you go, there's some more. So that, that's pretty close. I think it's supposed to be a sine wave or some, something like that. There you go. So, and, and mark my words, we'll come back and or we'll do this exact thing again like an hour or so from now and it'll, it'll be, it'll be like that. It'll be, it'll be slightly off. So I don't know. I mean, that's the nature of analog. Most of the modern analog synths have uh, this corrective procedure where it basically looks at what the oscillator is doing all the time. And if it starts to drift out of key or drift off, it just corrects it automatically. And it's constantly doing that. Well, I assume it's constant. I don't know for sure. I haven't asked it. All right. So the D is good. Let's, uh, let's get the neutron. Uh, so there we go. They, now they're both making a a sine wave, and you can already you can kind of hear it there. It's there. You can hear a little bit of what's known as the beat wave.
There you go. So, here, let me turn it up just a little bit. It may not be as noticeable. I don't know. You can hear. So, when the, the two um, waves are out of alignment, I, oh man, I really got to get a scope. This would be better. So, when the two waveforms are out of alignment, you get this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And you hear this all the time with like guitars, when you're tuning guitars or string instruments or anything like that, you'll hear that. Woo, 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 woo. And your goal is like to get it in that, that is perfect uh, sound, a perfect, I don't know, where there's no beats. Uh, for a really long time, one of my favorite like spacey things to do was just to take two oscillators and um, tune them exactly to the same note. I make it a real low one, which by the way, let's let's go ahead and do that. So I'd make it a really low waveform and I'd, I'd usually make it like a saw or something cool that would have a lot of timbers and just let it you know, fade in and out from each other. Hold on just a second. I should blow my nose real quick. So sorry about that. Had to, had to blow my nose. Ah, making dinner. Leslie, making dinner, yelling at kids, listening to you, listening to your machine. Hell yeah. Rock and roll. Third shoe, I have O. I have always a lot of electronic music, but this part of it is not new to me. I've always liked electronic music, but this part is new to me. Rock and roll, yeah. Let me help too, bro. Yeah, and, well, and and this is the part I like. I mean, for me, I've always done, you know, I've always gotten into sense. It's always, I, I'm sure it's different for other people. But for me, I always wanted just to, I wanted this weird sound that I never heard. Like, anytime I hear electronic music, and there's some like new uh, new sound or whatever, uh, or a track that just has like a. Typically, I'm thinking of like bass lines and stuff. Really, you hear some crazy bass line, and you're like, "Whoa, man, that's insane!" And uh, and it's some sound I've never heard. And all I'm thinking of, at least especially when I was younger, was like, "Well, how did you do that?" And even when I had a guitar, I would listen to bands like Sonic Youth and stuff, and uh, and they would do you know weird sh stuff with their guitars. Just and I was like, my first reaction was, well, how did you do that? I want to do that. I want to do it. And so, I think this is the natural progression, is to go down into the the building blocks of sound. Like when I first read about this, it was about twelve or so years ago. I, I was I was at a job and I, I read it and it was in Wikipedia and it basically said modular synthesis is uh, is modular and therefore can be bring any elements in and that way you can have uh, a, theoretically an infinite number of sounds and that that phrase right there I was like oh well let's go and so I I started getting into it and then when I started there was virtually nothing out there there was Paya. And um, oh oh shoot, the German guy um, who basically invented the Eurorack format, or he, he standardized. I don't know if he invented it or anything, but he standardized it. Um, oh, I'm spacing his name right now. I'll think of it in a minute. But um, it that was it. And so, thankfully now there's so much the market is almost saturated. I had a buddy of mine. Uh, today texted me and he's like, "Hey, what kind of modules should I get? Should I, you know, check this out or this out or this out?" And and I was just like, "I've never even heard of this mod. I never even seen. I don't know, dude. I don't even know what this thing does." So it's kind of I had to like do research and be like, "Oh well, okay. If I had this module, I would do this and this." Uh, and it kind of just kept going like that. Um, and it's cool I, for that factor. You could really just 
make any kind of sounds. This system that we have here, the Eurorack that I've set up, is different than my main rig. Uh, my main rig is a Paya um, format or frack rack format. It's the American version of Eurorack that never took off. Never. And uh, for a monocon of reasons, I'm sure. But it, it, it's I still like it. And the simplicity of it, and it kind of looks like this other format that's the old school format that you saw... Um, uh, you know, like the big Moog modulars with the quarter-inch patch cables. Um, that format's, um, it's known as modem or MOTM or .com or whatever. It has some different names, and I know there's some differences, but either way, those big suckers are awesome, and I, I wanted to do that initially when I was like, oh, I want to do modular synths. But it was like immediately a huge price point to get into because everything's twice as big. It costs twice as much. If you, if you buy, you know, I mean, like, it, it's just ridiculous. There's, um, um, there's plenty of companies out there that sell those, and you can kind of see what the price point is. So building it was bad, and then the weight, and then all that. So the 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 Pia format just seemed really cool to me, and it was more accessible for me to order it from uh, from Oklahoma and get all the crap. And uh, rather than Eurorack, which I ha would have to order it usually from like a German site that was translated into English or it just was hard. So it's really great to get into this stuff right now. I cannot stress that enough. It's fucking awesome. There's so much stuff out there and the price point to get into it is so much easier. Um, I'll probably say this all the time. This Behringer Neutron perfect perfect entry point it's it's like you can get it for like 250 300 bucks and uh and it does everything really everything that you would expect out of a modular synthesis or a modular synthesizer and you can add on to it like i have you it has its own case so you can leave it in your case and get like a little euro rack and and go outside of it and just patch them together they don't have to be physically together it's great. Dofer, that's right. Yeah, thank you, Third Shoe. It was Dofer um, I was trying to think of. That was all that was available like in the early 2000s and late 90s when I was first like, oh, what's this modular synth? What what was that crap those guys were using in the 70s? To... Uh, all right. So anyways, I'll quit. I'll quit yammering. It's boring. Let's... um. Let's do some, let's do some jamon. Yaman. We gotta get the beats going. Yeah, I could have looked it up too. Thanks for, for checking that. I, I, it's on the tip of my tongue and my reaction was to like just grab my phone. But I didn't want to do that on stream. It, I, I, I know that's, that's kind of rude. So you have to like sneak it like you would in, in school. I imagine that's what high school kids and and whatever's do now. Right on, third shoe. Or kit. Cool. Thanks for joining the stream, man. Yeah, I have a really bad time remembering people's screen names and their real names. Like my my PS4 account is just littered with people I'm like, I don't know. And I want to delete them because I like I don't even know who the hell these people are, but I, I, I feel like I'm gonna screw it up and get rid of like a long lost relative. Awesome. I'm so glad Thomas is digging this. Yeah, let's get some tone going. I I don't I mean this is fun talking and chatting. I'm having a grandiose time. But yeah, we we should make some noise. For the girls and the boys. Alright. Honestly, I could just listen to this for... I did. Oh wait, we just took it off the beat wave. Let's put it back. There you go. So that's what I was talking about earlier with the beat wave. If you tune it in, you, you get that and you get the little... Meow, the phasing. And whatnot. But if you take it slightly off, you get that... That throbbing. Well, in this way, it's a... 
a throbbing sound. This must be what sound designers do for when they, they're like, I have a headache. Oh, well, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> that didn't work. I have a throbbing headache. No, I don't know. Maybe not. Anyways. All right. So, if, if you guys haven't seen the stream before, um, and you know a little bit about synthesizers and stuff, the, the way this is set up, I've got um, all my gates being fed from the clock system. And then I do different stuff like uh, logic function, Boolean logic functions, like do ands and or gates and stuff like that. Um, third shoe, my son is getting into EDM stuff. He is taking a master class by Dead Mouse right now, and we got him and we got him a MIDI uh, keyboard. Oh, I think I saw ads for that for that Dead Mouse uh, master class. I'm curious if it's any good. I I don't know. I've watched some videos of that dude, and I don't know. He for some reason. I don't, I'm not into them. Maybe I'm just a jerk. I'm sure it's absolutely my being a, a, a big turd blossom of a human being. And I just like, I don't like that guy. But um, I definitely, uh, I'm probably like totally misjudging the guy. <laughs> He's probably like, would be my best friend and we would probably be the biggest nerds, nerds in the world geeking out about geeking out about gear I need third I need to get him in here I like it lol but he I like it lol but he does a section on this stuff oh yeah he's he's a huge modular um, addict that's that's all I really know him as I know he's an EDM producer and whatever, but I I know him primarily from him standing in front of his modular rig, which I think is a dofer. He has a he has a lot of A100 cases. I know that because they look so pretty. I really dig his his cases. Yeah, you know what? The more I say it, I'm pretty sure we would be buddies. I'm probably totally just being a, a jerk. Yeah, he's he loves that stuff, and I can't I can't argue with it. Um, anyways, let me get back to it. So we've got our uh, so the way that these are always set up, or I shouldn't say always, but eighty of the ninety percent of the time, I've got this set up so that the gate sources and everything come from my clock system over here, and then the the notes and everything come from the uh, BeatStep Pro. I don't have any gates feeding the uh the sense i can do that it's super easy to to rig into it but um the the reason i don't is it just limits me it puts me in a smaller box and it's harder to like wiggle out of that you know like if you're jamming live and you want to like change it there's going to be a big stupid gap where that's not where you're going to be pulling the cable for the gate and patching it into something else and it's just not cool um, or, you know, I don't. I haven't found a cool way to do it. And then, like I said, it, it it just puts you in this 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 box with the sequencer. So, if you have your gates being generated from something else, and for example, like you have a, a sixteen step sequence, you know, and you've got we'll say like three or four notes in there or something, and it's just be doo just whizzing along, playing the sequences across the little stripper thing. And, uh, and then this gate is coming in, but it's, instead of it being 16 steps, or, or let's, let's put it in more musical terms, so instead of it, it being one bar long, it's uh, two bars, or three, or four, or whatever. And, you know, through the, the magic of math, you know, eventually they're going to meet back up and be the same number of bars, and you'll have a complete phrase that might be um, 
16 bars long, or it might just be a really long musical phrase, but it's the same notes, but it's in a different rhythm as that phrase goes, or vice versa, you have a very quick rhythm, and then you've got this nice long phrase that plays out because this thing is just going, chugging at a very slow speed versus this guy's uh, output's going fast. Anyways, let's, uh, let's do what I'm talking about. Um, so I don't know why this guy isn't, oh yeah, because I... So we're listening to the um, that higher one that that's the D, and that is uh, the neutron, just farting away. Um, both of these sound pretty cool, you know. I dig it, but it could be better. Bring some beatage in here. That's almost annoying, right? Slower uh, melody coming out. So I'll go ahead and just open that that guy up all the way. Oh wait, that's not a good idea. Actually. There we go. That's not that's not too terrible. Build up going. That was a little slow on the draw there. I thought I had this. Should be faster, I would think. I was expecting the drums to be faster. I thought I, I set that up right. We'll fix it later. Right now, this it's actually pretty dope, so I'll get over it. We'll kill uh, the neutron right now. So the, the BeatStep Pro has a keyboard, and I don't know if it shows up very well on this camera because of the light difference and the contrast, but 
like it basically has a little keyboard like this one's not lit up here and these are octave switches yeah it doesn't show up at all it looks, it looks terrible oh wait here let me do this here again and eh, I gotta get a better camera but you can basically punch out which notes you want which notes you do and then these knobs you can uh, set the values manually or in the, behind the scenes and you can scroll through and it'll tell you like C, C sharp all that crap it's really easy that I jam with, uh, he's, he does all the beats for the most part and all the, that he's responsible for writing that, that kind of stuff and working on that stuff. So, you know, the guy who does the beats is, you know, the leader. So I just slave my stuff, my clock off of him. And, um, and that's what we're doing here. But it, you know, it's the same signal, same everything, but yeah, there's no, I can't record any of this. Um, other than what we're doing right now. Um, there's no multi-tracking capabilities. Uh, this does have a sequencer in it, so I can write musical phrases and you can even save it into it. Um, but for this purpose and for like one of the, one of the things I like about modular synthesis is that you can kind of, uh, kind of do the whole, uh, Zen garden, you know, you you design this sound or you design this patch, and and you're like, this is awesome, and then you just clear it out, start a new one, and it's just like taking your rake and moving your rocks around. It's great. And then there, you know, there's another side of the thought. People build them specifically to do a specific thing, and that's kind of what this is because I have a lot of just kind of patches that I always leave in. Rev DJ Razor Slade with a CV MIDI interface. Should I use my Push 2 in place of a Beat Step Pro? Yeah, I mean, well, the the Beat Step Pro, I'm using it for the CV out. Um, it it you you can, I mean, with the MIDI interface, I don't know. Um, if I'm remembering right, the Push 2 is. Um, that's a button box, right? Um, you'd have to go through something in advance, um, if I remember right. Third shoe, raw, I like it. Thank you, mate. Uh, Leslie Witt, Sebastian has requested a, all of those as waves. 
hands at the screen. Oh, you want to hear? You want to hear all them all them oscillators? Would you? So I don't know if you're if you're a fan of my heart here. Do you want to hear them all just drone for a second, like we were tuning, or or uh, just bring in some more music? Because uh, I'm I'm game for either, honestly. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That's exactly what I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, you you. As far to my knowledge, it doesn't have any CV, so you're. You're always gonna have that that kind of interface in between um, between the two. Like there's no MIDI going on here with the with the beat step. Yeah, you can see on the camera here. It's probably wildly out of focus, but whatever. These are all the uh, eighth inch outs for the different. Um, for the events like so this this green is here for the uh, the top one and this pink goes for the uh, the second one the neutron <laughs> both all right well let's um let's let's bring some more tunes in let's go Let's, we're gonna have to do the drone a little early because it, it it's just gonna ruin it if it's it's out of tune it sounds bad so um let me think what's the easiest way to do this um, let me kill the drums real quick we'll bring this uh, gate back in so I can I can just feed it Here, we'll do that. all right so Real quick, I'm gonna tune this guy because it's probably the the D because it's probably the culprit. We'll, we'll see. We'll see here, partner. Well, I reckon that's a little off. Oh no, it's me. It's not even the right note. That'll help. Now we'll never know who was the culprit. And crime will never get solved or something. There's still going to be that. I'm just going to get over it. Alright, so that's the other one. I'm gonna just do this one too. That's pretty close enough. Alright. And as requested, let's make them nasty waves. Let's get let's get some saws going.
Leslie Witt, he's Veruca Salt. He wants the books. He wants the world. DJ Razor Slave. Reverend DJ Razor Slave. Ah! Reverend Tongue Twister. Reverend DJ Razor Slave. Looks like Ableton has a CV tool. Max MSP based CV coming. Yeah, they need to. All right. You can already hear that wave, so let's... Everybody's stuck at home or stuck at work. <laughs> I don't know which is worse. That I like home. I I I like this is great. I I hope it never ends. I'm kidding. That, well, that's not a very good joke. I honestly love staying at home. If I can figure out a way to do that and make money and not become a cam guy or is that a I don't know if that's a thing but I don't want to do that third shoe home slash work yeah yeah I'm not I'm not I don't advocate that that's not a good idea okay so now we got that back. Justin Seven Jones work and not work blend together after wait what is that <laughs> After word digum from home, after working from home for long enough, okay, I should have, I should have figured that out. I thought it was a word I didn't know, and I was gonna learn. No, no, I, bad typing. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just a simple man. All right, cool. So we got that. Sounds really slow. Man, I almost want to fix it. Ah, let's. I don't know. Yeah, that beat's just too slow. Um. And I, I did do it this way. Yeah, I don't know why. It worked yesterday. 
I don't know. Okay. Stand by for just a second here. Change the speed of the incoming clock. And uh, that gives our drums better. I, I, I probably should try to remember what the what this is set to for the the sync. Um, I don't really care though. You know. It's probably 96 or something awful, but it's fine. It's it's working. We got our our rhythm. Oh wait, now we got our rhythm. Run that rhythm. Ooh, that one's really. Why is that? That should be. Shoes. So what is controlling that hat, the hi hat? Oh, so the drums are coming from this guy. This thing is really, really, really freaking badass. Um, I'll I'll try to go over it really quick because it's pretty neat. Here, I'll put it. Well, I can't really put it front and center too much, but we'll do what we can. So um, this top top row here is the uh, synth part, which we're not listening to. I, I, uh, I just want to use the drum machine part. So the drums are coming from these um, 10 knobs. So the way it works, it's kind of funny. So these, uh, these two knobs select the pattern, and it's not really like a hard click or anything. They're just soft knobs, and you'll notice the pattern starts to change. And it's it, they're basically set up in a matrix, you know, like, like the top knob is X and the, the bottom knob is Y or whatever, and you can you can find things by slotting them together. So you kind of have some recallability with it. Um, the uh, and then the next three pairs here are the drums. So this is the kick section, this is the snare, and this is the hat. Um, so the way it works is um, the top knob affects the frequency that that hit happens, and the bottom knob affects what the tone is. So like with the snare here, it'll be a really easy one to show. Super way to do drum rolls. And you're just twiddling a knob, so it's it's it's, it's freaking fantastic. It's so much fun to do. Um, to write, I wish there was a way to hit like get your uh, a crash. That's that's like the only thing missing. You have to find your crash from somewhere else. But yeah, same thing as with the pitch.
Um, and that's that's basically it. You, you, you really have a lot of variety playing with that. And then the last two are kind of a effects performance thing. So uh, this top one is a crossfader between the kick, which is all the way to the left, for those breakdowns. And those break ends, you can go all the way to the right, and the kick is out, it's just the hat and the snare. So, it, I mean, I love this thing. The, the, um, my only wish is that you had more uh, control over these sounds or that these outputted triggers, I would love to, I would, I would just go buy a, a boatload of drum modules just so I could get some, that I could use these. Now, Mutable Instruments does make a module that has it, and I maybe should research it more, but it only has three knobs. And um, I don't know where the XY thing comes in. I don't get it. It's still the same thing. You still have the frequency, which is super awesome. But uh, I, I, I'm curious how many patterns you can get. I should really try to just pick that thing up someday um, and check it out. But yeah, we're going to use this guy for the drums today. I, I have uh, a drum machine. It's a digital drum machine. But um, the way we would use it is we'd use the triggers out of the back of the, um, the BeatStep Pro. To write the, the drum patterns instead of its its built-in sequencer. Even though I won't lie, the Alesis SR60 drum machine sequencer is pretty cool when it comes to hardware sequencers like that. I mean, who who would have thought like, hey, just program an entire thing that's just fills. So you just go nuts with rolls, and it could be your whole damn like rhythm you just got to keep hitting fill right on the downbeat of the th anyway I don't know. it's a good piece of yeah so i'm sure we're sick of hearing these notes let's put the sequencer back in and if everything went right um we should wait that's weird oh well who cares let's go i think i okay so what i just realized is I think I sped it up and slowed it right back down to where we were. I don't... No, no, no. Okay, good. I didn't. Okay. So the... That was what was throwing me off. The tempo, which you can't see on here, the tempo was giving me the old one, and I, and I hadn't hit start. And then it... So it was saying, uh, like, a 120, and it's actually... And now it's reading 223. So half that number. So the problem is going to be all these sequences are going to play uh, way too fast. Oh, and it's not going to work. So what we'll do is we'll take the clock for the uh, beat step and we'll put it in this kit. Let's see what it, what is it? Oh, yeah, there we go. So now we're back to a buck 22, which is what we're supposed to be at. And now the sequence should play right. Third shoe, this has been awesome. Got a jet, jet. Okay, man. Uh, how long? I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna see how long I can go. Honestly, I was yesterday was so awesome, and I had such a great time. And I just was the whole time afterwards. I was like, man, I want to just keep. I want to do some more of this. This was a, this was really cool. And and I had a lot of great interactions with friends afterwards. So, uh, an answer to your question. As long as I can make it, I've, uh, I, I, we're, we're down to eating. It's a long story, but we're down to eating once a day. So that meal is in the next few hours or so. And so I might just eat that off, you know, like get rid of my pip and just eat it off camera or something. And we'll, we'll, we'll see. But yeah, definitely um, come back around if you can. All right, let's see if this works. On the boot. Two, three, oh. What the hell? There we go. It's not working. 
Oh, yeah. Because I don't think we wrote a sequence. Yeah, we didn't write one for the bottom one. I didn't, so we came back and I didn't really dig the, um, I didn't like the note that it was in, and I, it sounded like it could be cooler, if that's real. So I'm kind of shifting the key around. It's that really low note. It's cool and it's not. Oh wait, I remember now, we had some, uh, had some different... We had envelopes. That's what. That's why it doesn't sound nearly as awesome. Now we're now we're in business. Let's let's shift it back up to to the key that it was in. See if that. change the beat up. did it right there in it, in it inadvertently so you can you can start the sequence in a different part um, or rotate it which is a really common term in modules you'll see that in clock modules it'll say uh, it'll have a rotate option and what that all that does is just move um, like if you have eight in your eight outputs one's doing one and two's doing two, you can rotate it so one's doing two and two's doing three, um, and so on. And, and you can get complicated, like you can feed in new patterns into that rotation or you can just recycle it. But it's kind of a nice, uh, nice way to get complicated stuff if you think about it. If you send like a, uh, a sequenced pulse or something to that rotation for so many measures okay so trying to shine that that turd oh wait this is where we were earlier it sounded out of tune to me gotta I can't I can't stress that enough you know 
know, it's, it seems like a really, everyone goes for the filters and there's nothing wrong with a good filter, but bloody hell, it's your waveform <laughs> that you start up with and what it's doing that's, that's like, god damn, I'm into this. It's, it sounds tuned to the kick. Sequencer's moving along pretty slow enough to where you can, like, you can, you can get a nice jam there. So let's, um... the envelopes backwards. Oh my god. I'm such a doofus. So for for your reference, because I'll never remember, the way the way uh, the Neutron is set up, this top envelope, envelope number one, obviously, is uh, for the amplifier, which is going to be the new. And then the second envelope, number two, below it, very logically, and even in line with its knob, is only for the filter, or its soft patch. Cat and cob. Fact. Thank you. I'm trying to, I don't know. Like I said, it's, it's, it's turd shining right now. Maybe. Maybe get a little more patty. Is patty a word? P-A-D-D-Y. It probably is, but it's not what I think it is. Alright, that's not too bad. Let's let's put this to bed for right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna attach this little uh, modulation in, which is automatically it's attached to the uh, LFO, and I put the LFO on a triangle, because that's how I roll, and then I got this guy pretty slow, and I'm just doing that to kind of 
keep this thing animated and doing stuff, keeping a, I guess you could say like a bigger rhythm. Run that rhythm because we're ready. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it kind of takes care of itself. And I think that's, that's a big thing with uh, regular synthesizer you kind of bring over to modular is just automation. You know, you're, 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 you're automating tasks. I always love that with, you know, you throw an LFO on a filter and it's like, oh, that's cool. And in a modular synth world, you're, it's, you're, you're, you're doing that, all kinds of stuff. Automating. We'll, we might funk around later and uh, play with these gates in. I'll use these uh, LFO outs. These are all clocked to the, um, damn. These are all clocked to the, uh, uh, our, uh, they're all slaved. And uh, they pop out at different speeds. I've got them almost set up like you would a regular clock divider, but there's some oddities here and there, and I think I'm gonna keep making it odder. So I guess we gotta rear our head back over to the D and try to write something with this. Uh, I don't know, do, do we wanna hear what that was? I don't remember it, I just remember it being very disappointing versus um, uh, what I was hoping for. You know, you, you, well, well, we, you know, we flipped it back and I was like, oh, it's gonna be sick. And then I was like, oh, no, it's not. It's, did we do this? This is terrible. Oh, well. Let's <laughs> see. All right, I know what. We'll listen to it for just a second and see if it's cool. I don't know if we can tune it. something nice here I'm into it very next thing we should have been doing it but you know this we're not none of this is in real time because I, I, I want to stop and kind of talk and, and uh, 
explain what we're doing. So, you, you know, at the same time, I, I really want people to get ideas and I want them to give me ideas. You know, I want, I want some interchange. And, and I, I, I don't want to watch freaking YouTube videos. It's just boring to me. I'd rather interact. And so, oh, that was weird. I thought I heard it. I don't know, maybe it sounds crappy. <laughs> sounds better on computer speakers. Anyway, so what we need to do now is flush it with with some awesome. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the default awesome switch. Reverb. Everybody loves reverb. Almost as much as they love. out. What is the reverb coming from? Oh, it's, um, I'm probably reading this too late. It's uh, the 2HP. It's this guy right here. I've got a 2HP reverb and a 2HP delay.
in. I, so, I'm trapped in this vortex where it's like, I really enjoy this. But, I, I know eventually you're gonna, it's, it's gonna wear thin. Maybe. I'm not getting teary-eyed or anything, but I just, I dig, I dig where they meet up on that, like, uh, at the end on that minor, and then they come back. And that bottom, I really dig on that. That reminds me of, like, some, some Apex Twin or something, kind of shite. Make a decision. I'll tell you what, guys, I've been streaming for a little over an hour. Um, let me take this opportunity since we've got a nice little jam going. I'm going to get a fresh drink, um, TCB, real quick. You know, uh, I, I'll be back in about two minutes. If anybody new comes in and they're like, where the hell is the guy? Uh, just say something. And that way I don't have to make a, a fucking message and, and all that. So, yeah, I'll be right back.
little bit. But my wonderful wife came home and brought us, brought me a delicious water, which I need to be drinking instead of so. So now I'm, I might, I, I should be able to go the distance. Now I'm hydrated. sounds good. I almost want to see, so let's, I don't know, let's save this sequence and then um, we'll, uh, we'll build off of it. Like maybe we can add on to it. Scarlet, so offended. Cheers, mate. Been watching a while now. Awesome, mate. Awesome. Ugh. Man, that's crap. So, yeah, I'm... Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell. Ugh. All right. So, let's see. Yeah, that's right. I want to save these, so we'll see. It, I'm not, I'm not really big into saving. Um, sequences and stuff. I feel like I should, and utilize it as a tool. But I don't know. It's kind of like a tool you don't want to use. <laughs> It's probably not, it's probably very ignorant of me. It's like, well, I, I want to get into woodworking, but I'm really not into like tape measures or levels or or squares or L's or any of that. I just want to eyeball it. I think it's probably probably what I'm coming to. All right, so. trying to so I'm listening and I'm trying to think so which one do we change let's do this let's let's copy them so I'm copying both sequences uh, the green and the yellow to pattern two so now we'll switch over to pattern two we can uh, monkey punch it and try to mess it up into something tasty, save it, and then juxtapose it, or, or switch it back and see like, oh, this is terrible, or oh, this is fantastic. Hopefully we get another fantastic. I I'm, I can't stop listening to this. I, I, I hope you guys are joining. I know it's, it's, it's gotta be repetitive. Anytime I listen to recordings of, uh, of stuff like that, I'm like, oh my god, did I really listen to that loop for? And you skip, and you skip, and you skip, and you're like, 22 minutes? What was I, high? Oh, yeah, right. So, let's do this, yo. I don't know, let me, let me try muting, um, you know, let's let's mute from here because um, the benefit will be if we mute from the sequencer, the gate still it's still flapping open, and it'll do its thing. But we'll we'll stop on the last note, and that note should still be in the same key as um, as you know. Well, it will be in the same key because it's one of the keys. Go figure. Holy crap. Mind blown. Insane. But which one do we mute? Do we want to mute? I really dig. Ah. 
Ah. I know, I know. So I gotta stop. Okay. So do we want to mute? Um, I'll take the drums out and everything. Do we want? Do we want to? Do we want to change this guy? Or do we want to keep it? And that's the neutron. Or do we? Do we want to? Man, it's so weird how they don't sound cool by themselves. So do we want to do? Do we want to mute or or vice versa? Uh, jam on the uh, those freaking chords. I think that's what it is. I always like writing that when I when I. When I got into string arrangements and started writing a lot of that, this is a long time ago, and, it, and when I say writing string arrangements, I mean being an idiot and writing four string parts, a bass, and a cello. It was really stupid, but whatever, you, you learn. And um, the, uh, what was I trying to, oh, the cool thing to do, or one of the things I always like to do was generate chords, because you know, I guess it's from playing in rock and roll or something. You're kind of an idiot. You all follow the same bass note. And, um, or at least I did when I was a teenager. <laughs> I probably now would be like, that's stupid. I'm going to try to do fits or, <laughs> or, uh, or like, I don't know, something else, but not the exact thing the bass guy is doing. All right, so. I don't know. I say, I say we change the neutron and we'll keep the uh, the D going. Just cause I, f I feel like that guy's the bass line for the most part. And if we change the bass line, we kind of shift the whole damn song out. And there's definitely, we want to do that. We want to, uh, I mean, we're not, I'm not trying to write, we're not trying to do like a dance song or anything like that, uh, or write, you know, a verse, chorus, verse type thing. But if we can, um, we can just shift it up maybe later. Well, I don't know, maybe it'd be cool. So. I'm trying different notes. I want it. So, we're stopping off of, uh, I believe, this snare right here. I hit mute right about here. And it kind of, it kind of has a niceness. Leslie Witt, hey, my guy got to head out. Dinner's ready. Let me know next time you're doing this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey, I should be on later on. Um, I'm on Pacific time. It's it's like almost five o'clock here, and um, I don't know. I'm having a great time, so I'm gonna just kind of try to go until uh, until I'm not having a great time. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but thanks for stopping by. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, maybe we'll do it tomorrow too. Saturday is free. I think I think I got Saturday open. Let me think. going on Saturday. It should be good. Alright. So, um, let me take that mod. So I took the reverb out. Just so we're not... We're not getting... Um, tricked by the synthesizer cabal. Dude. So these, these sound kind of out of tune a little bit. Or maybe not. They did when I...
There's that beat step. Okay, so that that's that sounds a little sexier. I can find the hotness in it. Yes. I don't know what that accent's supposed to be. Either way, it's probably dumb as hell. So that sounds a little tasty. Let's, let's... going on here, Sarge. Let's stop, let's stop everything real quick. Yeah, my sequencer's not moving. Oh, wait. Is it, well, it wasn't moving earlier. Yeah, we should be... This operator error it happens a lot more often than I'd like now they sound at it at it oh man that beat is the beat is whack Thanks for lurking. All right. As awesome as this is and how I wanted it to keep going, kind of like, I feel like we should, we should start anew. Or, Let's uh, let's do let's do this let's let's let's, 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 let's let's get some gates. Is that like the opening? Um, let's fix this guy. I kind of dig the, the 16th note. Uh, 
what was I saying? Oh yeah, I kind of dig the 16th note. I had to take care of it. I have like a... I have another laptop. And I was trying to use that to like watch the shit. And I saw up in the corner it was like complaining that it was overheating. And I'm like, mother... So I, I like the 16th, but I think it, it's it's not what I'm... It's not really what I'm, I'm looking for right now. So the way this, um, I don't know. So the way, I don't know. Hopefully normal jacks make sense. I, or hopefully I can explain it um, well enough. So this has normal jacks. And by that, I mean, so the way this, this guy is set up, you have, um, you have your two inputs. And then you have your output. This uh, this top one is the um, AND gate, and the bottom one is or is the AND logic, and the bottom one is the OR logic. And um, it's kind of basically what it sounds like. So this thing will only trigger a pulse when both inputs are high. Or that there's a voltage on both, and uh, and this guy at the bottom, the OR will happen if either of them go active. So it almost acts like a a, a combiner, and you can't actually physically combine a lot of those those signals because they they interfere with each other. So this is the most logical way to do it. Uh, as far as normal jacks go, so. When I plug something into these two inputs, it's mirrored down to these two inputs, so I don't have to double up jacks or waste um, cables and stuff like that. Uh, at the same time, if you want to break that signal and have a dedicated one, you just pop in and put something else in there. So in this instance, we want to get rid of the 16th note um, and try something a little, little different against the, uh, the Euclidean. So I'm going to interrupt that. So now we're just hearing the Euclidean pulse coming through on the B input. Let's see. Alright, and so... Uh, <clears throat> wait a minute. Wait a moment. Wait a moment, sir. Okay, so now we're going to take the um, we're gonna enter, we're gonna try something different. So I had I have two options for this, and why don't we just why don't we go with the least obvious one? The obvious one is for me to use these um, divisions because they're all gonna be regular note divisions like sixteenth. Uh, eighth notes, quarter notes, and the dotted versions of all those too. So you would just drop that in so that it would be synced. This, these outputs are the Euclid. I knew I was going to the <laughs> Euclidean outputs. And um, I won't even pretend to ne to act like I read up on what that is, but I know that you can. They they are a little bit more complex patterns than just on off on off on off at some other rate and speed. You, a lot of people will use them to trigger drums and stuff and make little drum rhythms, but the same issue occurs where the drum rhythms are very, very um, uh, simple. You know, it's just, uh, it's, I mean, you, you, you're basically stuck writing techno over and over and over and on and on. Uh, so I say, just for S's and G's, just, just to try it out, we should... Um, we should go with the less obvious one and try these different Euclidean outputs. See if maybe we can get something, something jamming, something yummy. I don't know. Yeah. All right. So, ouch. So the default thing to go to is the, um, it's the fastest one. Um, so we'll start there, and then we'll just kind of work our way down. Yeah, this is what I'm fucking talking about. 
I wouldn't have come up with that kind of fucking arpeggiation staccato on my own. I'm not, I'm not in any way that inventive. thousand me's couldn't come up with that but if I if I and you saw that I, I didn't plan any of that out I I didn't remember that that would work I just knew or I didn't know I just tried it and I'm like I don't know maybe the drums are tasty on it let's try it Ooh. What the funk is going on? Still getting levels, but the, but it's all still the same notes. It's still the same thing. We've just got our gates kind of moved around, and then we've got this funk.
up with a little bit of uh, herbs. everything so when you pull that it all stops and i here I'll, i'm gonna mute my mic so you can hear how loud that that reverb is It's kind of silly. I uh, I half wonder if it's bleed through or something. No, wait, I checked that out earlier because I pulled the, the ends. Whatever. Whatever. It don't matter. All right. Um, so I I really, 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 really,
dig that jam and I dig that tune and I dig what's happening. Um, I'm also bored with it. I mean, we've been doing it for a little while. So, uh, I don't know. We're, what tempo are we rocking right now? We're, we're rocking like... Uh, what, what, tell me. Tell me the tempo. Well, it's, it's, it's not going to. Or I don't... I don't know how to get it to... Whatever. Doesn't... Doesn't matter. It just needs to change. We need to get something, something else. I should probably put some noise in the background. You can probably hear fans. All right. What I was saying though is that I, um, I want to. Uh, to um, I want to start something different I want to change change up this patch maybe try to write maybe try to write a totally different <sighs> totally different jam and I, I think I'm just gonna turn that God it's so noisy oh wait here Just listen to reverb for a minute here. We'll, we'll put it on all the good stuff. We'll turn their real life, their live channels down. I wonder what the drums sound like. They probably are. <laughs> So it's kind of, I don't know if it's funny or not, well, so when I, I'm a sound engineer and I do a lot of, you know, I mix a lot of bands and stuff like that, and um, it gets, it's just boring sometimes, and, or I'm just like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just bored, and so I, uh, one of my go-to things is to because uh, you almost always have reverb or at least you have a reverb unit you may not even have it pitched into the main into the house mix or anything but most mixers will let you pfl or afl or whatever the term to listen to it, it or pfl i guess you could you could preview and listen to it and uh and so a lot of the times i would do that to like while away the boredom and the, the mundanity of it all I would just like put on my headphones and push them against my head as hard as I could so I could block out the show that was boring as far as I was concerned and then and listen to what we're listening to right now and I swear to Jeebus it's, it's the best it's this at least for me I can
there's this really great um, kind of ambient noise artist um, named uh, named William uh, William Basinski and um, this kind of reminds me of of the stuff he, he does. He's really cool. He's worth checking out. Um, his most famous album, or, or not famous, his most well-known one is... Um, oh, shoot. I'm forgetting the name of it. Um, I'll think of it in a second. Um... The, oh yeah, the disintegration loops. That's what it's called. And uh, it's really, it's a cool, it's really cool. It, it's basically, it was these old tape loops that he made, and I think he made them like, I think the story was they were decades old, and he never treated the tape. And if, and if you don't know, um, that tape, if it gets heated up, if it's not in a good controlled environment, it'll degrade, and the magnets, magnetic. Uh, film on it will literally just fall off and crumble and there's like plenty of horror stories of that and um, that's what this was is he'd have a tape loop and every time it ran by the head it would do a little bit more damage and a little bit more damage and do all these weird artifactings and stuff and so it's like a four cd set and it's like oh my gosh it's they're really long songs like 40 minutes is the average for a song but hands down it's 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 bizarre you can listen to or I can listen to it at least I don't know about everybody else I can listen to it and be really into um, into it and enjoy it and then you know time passes and I turn around and look at the, the, the timer on the track and I'm like 20 30 minutes in and I'm like really I swear this is the same song and you can skip through and you can hear it like changing as well but the gradual change it's it's like it's analogous to like a plant growing or something but much faster um, you know obviously would and that's what you would prefer I don't think anyone would listen to a three week long song third shoe so do you like uh, trance more um, so I never really I don't know. Not really. I would say no. Um, but trance music, I don't know what that is anymore. Like 20 years ago, I, I had buddies um, that were really into it, and they were into a subgenre called Psytrance. And I kind of associate all trance music into that subgenre. It's probably ignorant of me, but. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't care for it. I, I I personally just find it, at least then, maybe I could listen to it now, and I might find something I enjoy about it, but back in the day, no way. I really couldn't. Um, yeah, I, if, I mean, as far as dance music goes, uh, I love... I always love jungle and and everything that comes from that um, like you know I love dubstep and I love dub music like oh reggae dub um, but if you're talking about modern electronic dance music I have to say jungle if there's a jungle show I'll never go to a, you know it's hard to get me to a club but if, if you were if it was jungle I'd be like oh you know I could put my dancing shoes on you know uh, uh, Cat and Cod. Like our old buddy uh, Greg on Earth Tunes. Um, are you talking about the, 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 the trance? Uh, du uh, third shoot, dub is awesome. Yeah, man, I, I, I love it. I got, I really got into dub and reggae music like, uh, like a little over 10 years ago or so. I got this little radio this internet radio thing from Logitech 
and I never, it's the fucking stupidest thing I ever bought because I only listened to one radio station. Um, it was called Dub Extra. It's, it's, it's gone now. Rest in peace. But that radio station was phenomenal, and, it, and I, it was key into getting me into it because they would play uh, reggae music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, modern, uh, just, uh, and they would play all kinds. It would be mostly dub, mostly instrumental, but uh, there was plenty of songs that were just good, and it was, it, it, there was, there was less reggae, I would say, than uh, and then it than you would expect, but oh my god, it was so, it was so good. Um, and uh, and that's where I kind of got into it, and then I got further and further into it. Uh, Cat and Cog, he does the side track. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, Greg's awesome, man. Uh, I swear though, I I won't lie, I don't, I don't, I know him more for him and his gear than I do for his music. That makes sense. Like, I don't, I can't name him a song from him. I don't really know if I've ever listened to a lot of his stuff. Uh, but I know the guy, and I and I have a lot of homies like that, a lot of friends like that that I, I like, and I'm probably the the biggest dickhead of a friend because I love their, I love them, and I love what they produce and stuff. But I probably don't have any of their albums, and I probably don't listen to them that often. And uh, I'm probably going to musicians' hell for that. But I, uh, but I love. I love what, I love Greg's, uh, I love him, you know, he's a cool cat, I'm into his stuff, I'm always going to listen to my homie's stuff, I'm always going to be into it. Cat and Gog, sure, he's put together pretty nice modular setup as well. Yeah, I, I need, I want to go, I've seen pictures, um, I think, yeah, I've seen pictures that you've taken, Cat and Cog, and, and, um, yeah. Well, seriously, he needs to he needs to get in the car and come uh, come make some modular love. I know here in Phoenix we have a um, a modular meetup that's uh, monthly. I think obviously it's it's not going on at the moment, or it's it's going on behind the closed doors. I don't know, but it's um, we have a modular meetup. It's called uh, Noise Toaster, and uh, my my buddy. Uh, Aaron, he, he's always wanting us to go play at that, and I want to do it, but um, of course, you know, the best laid plans uh, or whatever. I mean, we, you know, we're not doing it, obviously, because of the virus. Oh, God, that's, that's some good tunes. I think um, I'm going to just totally mess stuff up. So I... I what I just did is, um, so the drums are coming from a clock that's from the master clock. And, um, and that's it. Now, I've taken the, um, our clock source, instead of it coming from this guy, it's now coming from the internal clock. It has a little button. Kind of annoying, but it works out because you can, um, I can rotate sequences that way, but for... A split second, it takes it off its clock and goes to, or it takes off the external clock, and goes to the internal. And right now, we're listening to the internal clock, which is half the speed, or maybe a quarter of the speed. I can't remember. So now, and and all the gates and everything are being driven from that. So now we're hearing the the brah, brah, you know, a little bit slower. Third shoe. Any suggestions to listen to in jungle? Man, not not really. Uh, nothing comes to mind. I really got into this one guy, um, Donnie, which is it's a pain in the ass to search for his stuff because you pull up Donnie Osmond a lot. Uh, but he does. So what Donnie does, I love. And and there's another guy. I'll think of his name in a second. Um, so what his stuff is is freaking hilarious because it's all like I call it like horror themed. Uh, drum and bass and his is almost I guess it's what drum and bass is what it's being called I don't know but um, so here's here's a Donnie format it's awesome it starts out with a hat so you just got the you got some sort of hat that's kind of got a little nice jingle and then 
and then there's like these uh, ambient sounds and whatever and then there'll be a sample from some horror movie and and I oh it's so awesome it's so great you just got this sample going over these hats and this build up and then the break and then you've got your beats and your bass and then you get like a callback to the sample of like from the beginning it's it's a very very simple format the thing that's nice with him and uh oh the name's on the tip of my tongue um uh, the other guy there's a lot of artists that are that did that because it's older and the songs are like really old um and i don't know i hope it's still going but so the the style is almost analogous to like what breakcore does where you have like these uh really quick little loops chained together so i i'm gonna sound like an asshat um but it's like the beat is like bum bum ba da bum ba da bum ba da bum ba da bum 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 ba da bum ba da bum ba da bum ba da bum bum ba da bum ba da bum it's like just railing at you um and then like you know ba da bum ba da bum and then maybe a call back to the classic ah man like and and I'm just into it I'm I'm I love that stuff it's pretty cool no no I think he's just known as Donnie um um, look up uh, Donnie Symptom- Symptomless Coma. Um, that's a good song from him. <laughs> um, I, 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 oh, if I if I wasn't, uh, I'd look up some other stuff too. There's some. I'm trying to remember. Um, there's one that's that samples Vincent Price, and it's my favorite one. And I can't. Re- I always have a hard time finding it. I have to search around on YouTube. But um, symptomless coma is really good. You know what? Actually, I think I have them on my my YouTube. Um, okay. Oh, 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 hold up. Hold up. Here, here, here. I saw it in my search. So. Oh wait, maybe not. Uh, I, well, so there's a song that by Donnie. Let me see. Yeah, it keeps pulling up the wrong things. Maybe I won't be able to find it, but it's uh, it's got this sample. Um, where the 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 sample from the movie goes. Now we shall begin. Oh, damn it! And it's got all these classic like hits. Um, I don't know what that that hits called. It has a name, but it's the it's the guys going oh, damn it! It's it's good. So that the symptomless coma is cool. Um, you can probably find some other stuff. Like all the pictures are just some crazy horror stuff. He's he's all into that. Um, uh, into that that type of of uh, of that presentation, you know, of being like horrorcore and. And whatnot, and I'm 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 loving it. Uh, you see, uh, I I maybe have uh, have them on my Spotify. Um, no, and there's some. Oh, apparently there's some dingus too named Donnie. It's not a very original name unfortunately but you're i mean if if if, the right donnie is gonna have something scary some picture of him with his eyes whited out and blood coming out or something like that that's usually what i see but that's good um and maybe just go down that rabbit hole and check it out on youtube maybe they can they can uh swing you over to the 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 other artist i can't think of Uh, but that's that's good stuff um for jungle or drum and bass really I guess technically it's drum and bass it's not jungle but um, the last good jungle I heard uh, was uh, was from um, Venetian snares and even then I listened to that that I didn't even I don't know if I listened to the whole album even he did like a jungle album a while back before he got into modular and uh, 
when he was spitting out, you know, four to six albums a year. Now it's it's like it's it's exactly the same problem that I encounter. You get a modular and it's just like, oh, this this is this is going to take a while. This is, uh, this water is so great. I'm loving it. So much that I need to do something about it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the restroom really quick, guys. Um, and then I think we'll come back. I'm, I've been digging this background. Oh, yeah, I like that. I love it. I've been digging it. But I think, um, I think the best thing to do is start clear. So um, when I come back, we'll start pulling some stuff out and resetting it back to the default patch. And um, I don't know, maybe we cover some stuff. If you guys, uh, while I'm in the restroom, if you guys can think of anything you wanna hear or you wanna see done, um, we could do some sound designing. We can write some more little jimmy jams um we can play with the new uh, i'm sorry the neutron the new tree some more with the drums um I'm, I'm open for reals um i i feel capable we could probably spend some time like doing any of those things i i won't lie i kind of i was thinking about it when i went to bed i was kind of wanting to try to create a jungle um you know like the old school you know the jungle baseline where you, you have an envelope like a excuse me an AR envelope attached to your pitch so that it always has like a little dive at the end like boom do 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 you know oh my god but then I'm afraid I'll just write dumb stuff like that with it um or or I'll write uh like a tribute to Lemon Deeds, this is Los Angeles. We do have, um, we do have some jungle, some jungle beats in here. Um, I don't know. They're... Well, that's obviously no. We got Amen. Oh, Good old Amen. Oh, and we can set it up. Uh, we can loop it. Now, the, the only issue is with the 2HP is, um, well, I guess we, we're kind of limited in being able to cut samples together. Uh, most of the time, I just trigger it with the, uh, the beat step and kind of tune it in so that it, it loops on the right spots. But either way, I mean, that's an option. You know, we can do that. Just, just keep in mind it might be a little bit repetitive but uh yeah if you guys have uh, anything you want to see real quick go ahead and throw it in chat while i'm in the restroom real quick like i said should be back in uh two shakes of uh of a lamb's tail
back's a little sore. I, um, I, I did this yesterday, and I, I was standing up the whole time, and I realized, um, I don't know what it was, but my, my knees were killing me afterwards. I was like, I can't stand the whole time. I'm going to have to get a chair. So I rigged that up to work right, and, and now my back is killing me because I'm, I'm always hunched out of the chair to, to touch everything. So I guess you can't win them all. Or most. Or much. Well, I hope everyone's having a good time. I'm having a blast. Um, dinner's on the horizon down the road. And um, I still think I can keep pounding through. We might keep going. Um, at least for another two or three hours. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Third shoe. Getting old sucks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the, the suckiest part, at least for me, is the, the, the thought that I squandered my youth. <laughs> that I'm like, oh man, I could have like been way doper. And still, instead I waited. I'd really like a Benjamin Button type aging process. I think that would be excellent. You start out old and then you get younger and your body gets better and better at shit. And then eventually, I guess you reach your peak and then it kind of like, then you become a little baby. But, you know, for those years in your, maybe your 20s or 30s, who knows? You're, you're like King Kong of Donkey Kong whatever the hell that meant so my this cable has been bugging me because it, it pops up in the window so I'm gonna I'm gonna replace it with this less rigid key um, less rigid one yeah it's better ish So we were going to do a couple things. I remember. Uh, we were gonna we we're gonna start new. Um, I think we need to change the tempo. I don't know. Um, what would be better though to go like up in tempo? Or down. I mean, I won't lie. I'm, I'm digging the, the slowness that's going on with this. Maybe, maybe monkey around with the, with the, with the sound designing of it. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of a dork. And I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hide it. I really, really enjoy this. This little uh, a sea of nonsense. It's just... Like, part of me doesn't want to pull it. And this is what would happen to me with modular a lot of the times. I'd like go in, you know, and I, I, I joked like I was a space cadet or something, you know, you go into the space machine, and uh, and you come out hours later, and you're like, oh, have I been listening to the same stuff for hours? Am I, am I a doofus? Am I, let's see. Third shoe, I like uh, seeing you work the knobs and seeing change. Awesome. 
Well, yeah, yeah, and I'm trying to explain what I'm doing, too, which kind of probably takes out of the musical aspect um, from it. But, you know, again, I, I, it's interactive. I want, I want, to, I want us to, to kind of write these jams together, you know, with, with me being the, the, the rivet to do it. That's ultimately what I'd like. I like uh, community jamming. But I take it from from uh, you desiring change. We should probably change things and uh, and come up with something something cooler. Now I remember why I moved this thing down because it gets in your face. Sorry, I'm gonna. Hopefully this mic isn't making a bunch of bonk 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 noise. I don't hear it. But that could be for a monic that could be a lot of reasons why. Alright, so we're gonna change it out. I still like this ambient meow. I like this song. So I don't know. I don't know about getting rid of uh, can you hear that sound? <laughs> charged up well he came in and I tried to pick him up and he was like he did not want to get picked up he wanted to survey everything on his own so he's trying to get away from me and I'm like not gonna have it and so I uh, I picked him up and you know held him up to camera and everything but he took off like as soon as I put him back down I'm like yeah that, that's the game we want to play you show up do your little cute stuff and then you're gone perfect awesome Definitely don't want to interrupt, interrupt what I'm doing, which is possibly important, probably not. Oh, yeah. All right. Almost done with this 
water. Jeez, Louise. And that's like, uh, that's one liter. 1.8 fluid ounces for you uh, Americans. 33.8 for those who don't own a calculator or can do simple math. Well, it's not that simple, actually. I, I would have a hard time. Oh, wait, no, I wouldn't. Yeah. So, take that. As awesome and as beautiful as this is, the good thing is we can make it again if we want. That's that's ultimately the goal with modular synthesis, I think, is not. Um, Jesus, I'm shouting in that fucking light. It's not to. Um, well, I don't know what it's not, but I know what it is goal is to be able to sound design every time on the time so if, like right now this is cool and all we did was like get it Blade Runner wet uh, which is I think a real term and that 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 makes it awesome so to get back uh, all right so what we do now we should change the tempo I'm gonna go off camera real fast to do that gotta fix this cable
super hot. Slowly the um, that LFO, so it 
opens up and, and shrinks. We don't have any LFO feeding the neutron. I suppose we could. I kind of... I kind of don't want too many things like floating in and out, like filter hot, filter low, filter hot. Because it just... It just... I don't know. It gets chaotic. It's hard to manage. LFO. Oh, um, yeah, so LFO, it's an acronym for Low Frequency Oscillator, um, and it's basically the, uh, it's pretty much what you'll use all the time in a lot of synths um, that, are, that are out there, like just about every synthesizer is going to have some sort of LFO. Uh, very, very often it's going to be used for a vibrato effect. And it'll be tied to uh, the mod wheel, so you'll you'll push your mod wheel up, and it'll be like do do do. It'll get a little, Woo. and that's usually what an LFO is used for. Um, or most common is so what you'll see it. Um, in synthesis, it's used all the time for uh, for all kinds. Really, it's kind of crazy. Uh, the most common one, at least in this scenario, is to tie it to your filter instead of your pitch. So you tie it to the pitch to do the vibrato effect, tie it to your filter to get some movement going. So, like if we pull out, and we're just listening right now to the D, which has an LFO on the filter, it's really slow one. You can possibly see it glow. It's not glowing yet, now it's starting to. There's its bright red and it comes out. These other ones are going a little bit faster, so you might be able to see it. But, um, and that represents the voltage change that's occurring. So, and I, I may have mentioned it earlier, but these are in a five volt range. The whole modular system is a 10 volt range. I did half of that because it's, it's just way easier than it. it it's kind of like what I was saying earlier with the filter. It, it's great to go to two extremes, but it's kind of nice to meet in the middle or find that middle. And in this instance, that, that's the case. I'm still only sending it five volts up and down, and it's moving that filter the same way. So here it is without. You can hear it's not changing or anything if I sweep it up. I can sweep it all the way closed. Or I can feed this, and once this thing goes bright, it's sending a positive voltage, which is effectively turning that knob a little bit to the right and and either depending how I don't know if it's if it's unipolar or bipolar on the setup but um, it's just gonna push it up from the base so you set the base frequency and then that LFO as the voltage slowly rides rises up you'll get the um, you'll get the frequency moving too and on like a lot of synths it's very common to use. it's kind of like for me in the 90s, it was my go-to, like uh, filter LFO, filter, you know, I was always aiming for that. I didn't even like filters on env or envelopes on filters too much because I was just wanting that LFO to do what we're hearing right now, that slow rise and, and drop. that basically means is that you can 
muted. Um, it can be muted or unmuted. But this one actually, instead of having a, a, an open shut type system, it has a. Um, let me turn that down just a little bit so I'm not screaming. It has a um, uh, a Vactral, which is a kind of an interesting circuit. I'm not going to get into it, but the benefit to a Vactral in this case is that it actually has a little bit of attenuation room. So instead of it being binary where it's it's all the way on or it's all the way off, you actually have a little bit of, going back to what we were talking about before, a little bit of the middle. And it's not very much. It's like a, it's, um, this gets more technical, but it, it, it's like, a, I think it's less than three volts. Like it's 2.5 or 2.7, which isn't a lot of room to do that. But whatever, who cares? It's fine and it, it actually works because some things might be a little bit too sharp and you'll get popping and clipping from it, the mute being, you know, on and off really fast. But if you have a, if you send it a, um, a triangle wave that has a slight ramp in and out of that on and off moment, you'll have a smoother transition and less of the clicky, clicky sounds. And I don't know, you might want it. There was like a ton of digital noise music with just clicky, clicky sounds. It's crazy. So now we're gonna we're gonna put that gate in. We've got that boom, boom, smack, boom, smack. And I wanna I want it to just come in just on these kicks. So oh wait, did I ever sync this back? I did not. Okay, hold up. Okay, that's why. I, okay, just to explain what the stupidity was wrong here. So I changed the tempo earlier. I went off camera to do that. And we sped it up a little bit. And but from earlier, I had the FH2 on uh, its internal uh, clock, and uh, which which wasn't too far off. It's like at 120, I think, uh, BPM. And uh, I think we're running like a I don't know 160, 150, I don't know, somewhere. And so when I looked, it looked fine. But once I started looking longer, the, the pulse just wasn't flashing on the beat right. And I realized, oh man, this is still on the internal. And now I've switched it over to the external. And now what I was looking at that looked right isn't gonna work. So let me see. All right, I like this three here. So I'm gonna try that. And, and I'm going to use the three off of this uh, because, again, like I was saying earlier, with the um, it, this, these are all triangle waves, so you get a little bit of uh, ramping. I don't know if this is desirable, though. Let's try it on um, the pulse because these are also they're they tend to be inverted from each other. No, that's that's even dumber. Let's try this. No. Um, huh? Now we just hear the snare. That's funny. Let's try two then. No, it's gonna be too much. Now, what would be nice? See, the only the only thing it stinks is like uh, there's no really there's no way to, to switch this on and off without just pulling that out, which is fine, I guess. I'm cool with it. It's kind of neat. I get, you know what? I'm thinking here, you could use it for some transitioning. Although I don't have any. Thump, thump, thump beats in this thing. I mean, I'm sure they're there, but I don't know where they are. I don't, I don't look for that stuff. I should, maybe. Uh, okay. This is nice. I'm gonna go to the restroom one more time. Well, not one more time. One more time for the next time. 
until the next time. But yeah, I'm gonna go to the restroom really, really fast. Um, again, if you guys, you know, I'm, I am your vessel. Tell me what you're interested in, what you, if you know, what you wanna do. Otherwise, you're just, we're just gonna keep doing this, which is probably fun too. All right, I'll be right back.
think I mentioned it's hot in here. If I haven't, allow me to explain. Okay, we've changed the tempo. We sped it up. these patterns from earlier, I guess. I don't really care. I'm just gonna beep, 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 delete them. Well, delete the copies anyways. Oh yeah, and then that, that's gonna freeze our notes. Which is the worst thing in the world. It's the opening to the, the, the soundtrack to The Last Temptation of Christ.
that's just the D with the filter sweep. I, I killed the neutron. streaming for about three hours now thanks again for everybody that's been hanging out and coming on all all you lurkers uh, anybody just keeping it running and everything thanks so much i really this is awesome i'm super happy i i really honestly uh am really just ha appreciative of it it's cool as hell um so yeah we're in hour three and i'm thinking um I know earlier I said that uh, this thing detunes, especially if you leave it on for a long time. And I cumulatively, it's been on for about five hours. I've got some definite heat generated from it. It's remarkable how much uh, heat just comes off of this thing. It kind of makes me worry about, um, well, I guess it really doesn't matter. You know, I mean, electronics, heat is their enemy, absolutely will destroy them but it's also what you use to manipulate them and work with them so I mean if you've ever done surface mount it, it, it's a long it's a, you really got to work at it to kill these circuits but th at the same time too that's that surface mount the materials I'm sure for uh, for through hole might be a little weaker and the, oh wait Never mind. There's no through holes in this. This is almost entirely surface mount. So, and that's that's uh, Euro rack too, guys. If if you want to get into DIY, um, that was one of the reasons I did the Pi I think too was because there really wasn't much DIY, and and uh, Euro rack is all about sandwiching boards and compressing things down, and you can't do that with through hole. You gotta you gotta go the surface mount way really hard not to which is fine if you look at my if I just show you my modules they're almost all all the boards are mounted at a 90 degree to the plate so they stick out really far like here's the front panel and then here's the circuit board and it's just this long dildo that sticks out of it and um, so the back of the rack had and you have to have a ton of clearance for it like the default is six inches for it, but I, I specifically get things that are seven inches, and I almost 
almost never close the back of them off. I let them so they can hang out because I, I don't, it's just easier than trying to, to get everything to sandwich up. Um, and because you'll use risers um, and whatnot to get the, the, the distance that you want. going on this girl right now. And by girl, I mean the D. The Model D. We'll get this thing going. And, um, oh wait, we were going to tune. That's the whole reason I was... Oh, Jesus. Oh, God! See, hear that? That's A. Here, I'll take this. I'll do this right. So that's definitely not in tune. Which way do you think it's going to go? Negative or positive? My money is negative. So there you have it, right there. We've been on, this thing's been on for five hours. In a, I'd say a fairly hot room. <laughs> and we are exactly at the half step mark for it. It has a mark for negative one and then there's an in-between mark. And although this isn't the I should mention, by the way, these uh these overlays are not stock. These are different overlays um, than what comes with the unit. So maybe the, the original one is different. But yeah. I had to tune that down a whole half step. Whole half step. That that's a little wild. So, wait a minute. Oh, man. Alright, cool. So, let's do... Let's do this guy. So, we're gonna... Go over here. Um, oh, we'll get rid of all the delays. Alright. This thing goes straight up. That's some weird effect. So this thing goes straight up to noon, and it says it's on the money. For tuning, the neutron is straight up noon. Let me check oscillator two real fast. Yeah, but oscillator two is slightly off, which is such a pain in the balls because, um, I don't know. I I keep hitting that one. That's the one I I hit. I wish, I wish they would put a lock on these because I keep accidentally tapping them, and I'm like, oh, what's happened to this little? And I'm like, oh, it's it's my stupidity. So. You know, fix it, guys, whoever you are. Whoever that is, wherever you may be. All right, so let's bring the other oscillator in a little slower. So you hear the beat wave there of those two. 
So, I mean, and this is a real common sound designing thing uh, to detune the oscillators to get this kind of. Uh, well, it doesn't sound good at low. It actually doesn't ever sound good. So there we go, we got two going. Yeah, that one's already like almost exactly in sync. You can hear it go, you can hear it phase out for a second when it, in, it, uh, oh, what would you call that? The, the bass frequency? Sure, the oscillator one's bass frequency. Once it phases out of it by like overlapping the two waves, you get that high. Yeah. It's it's probably a, it's debatably good and bad. So we're pretty low on the octaves. I wouldn't mind going down on these um, these octave switches a little bit. So. Um, this is something I learned about these. They're pretty cool. Like, really, octave switches, I didn't think I would like it at all whenever I saw those designs. And then I, I kind of figured out I, I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, because instantly, you can ship these oscillators up exactly the tuning you would always want. And, uh, you know, octaves. And if you want to do something weird like fifths, you can totally, or sevenths, uh, you can totally do that with the knob, but, you know, instantly shifting something up to an octave in the register is way, way more useful. Oh, shoot. Cat and Cog. Is the mixer at the lower right of your build? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the Tesserat mixer. Uh, it's the Tex Mix. Um, yeah, everything kind of starts here. It's kind of weird how it's set up, I'll admit. Um, it's just because the... Uh, the depth underneath this guy so this uh, I would have preferred to have had this module here and vice for you know have them switched around but um, the clearance underneath there there's like a little leg and you, it just won't fit and I couldn't think of anything else to do I, I and even these guys these two HPs they go their boards are mounted at a 90 so they have very terrible clearance you're really limited on on where you can put it in certain cases so i'm i'm cool with this you know it, it's fine it could be cooler i guess who knows um these are two separate pieces and they're connected by a ribbon cable so i could feasibly put it up here as well i um i really just did it i'm thinking a lot about moving my modules around um to get something, uh, to get something a little bit better, because I've I've noticed a couple of problems, like all these two HP things with their little tiny knobs next to each other, is just hard to get to, and since I put it right next to a bunch of stuff that's gonna have jacks in them all the time, it's it was just like, you know, uh, terrible, stupid, terrible idea. So I'm gonna gonna fix it someday in the future I'm kind of waiting on this module that I, I've been wanting to get um, or I've been I've ordered it uh, like a year ago almost and I'm still waiting on it and I was gonna order this uh, the, the tip top sample one sample playback one But I'm just right now. I don't have the budget for it, so I'm just gonna hold off for a bit until um, until things change. All right. So I'm sure this is. this mixer by the way it's it's really cool it's a DIY project as well 
but the the finished version if you're not if you if you're in a hurry and you don't want to do it you just buy the finished version and it's pretty cheap i don't want to give a price to be wrong but i want to say you could do it for like a around a hundred dollars maybe like i i think it's like i don't know i, I i'm not google um but I know it's really cheap. It's 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 a screaming deal for what it is, and um, the documentation, the build documentation, is pretty good. There's no schematics, but if I ran into problems, I'm sure they would have helped me out um, or hooked me up with a schematic or something. You know, uh, I've I've had that in the past with some DIY projects where they they don't want to give you the schematics. Um, which I don't understand. I mean, I get it, but it's because it's a publishable physical IP type thing. But at the same time, sending me little chunks of it when I ask for help doesn't uh, doesn't seems like it's the same law that's being broken. So I don't know. It, it, and, and in the end, it, it it proves that knowledge shouldn't be you shouldn't charge for shit like that. It's it's asinine. It, it stifles innovation. But enough of that. Lovely. Almost broke my own rules. So let's do this. Let's get this drone being more drony. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not really kidding. I'm actually thinking that's a good idea. You know what? Let's hold up to our original original plan. I, I know, I'm jumping all over the place. I'm, I'm very sorry. Kind of a doom, doom cough about it. So, I'm going to, for the sake of sound designing, I'm gonna, man, these things are so warm. I'm gonna, I'm, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this gate. I'm gonna pop it into, divider here it's it's doing basically 16th 16th notes so we're gonna we're gonna get rid of that oh here let's get rid of the reverb so dry there he is so that's that it might be smarter to do something a little slower so let's do this let's see Sounds like an alarm. Ah, like, oh, man, I hate this camera. I hate it so much. Whatever. It'll, it'll, it'll fix itself in a minute. And maybe you have to make a little face. There it goes. All right. <laughs> um. So right there, I heard something that I wanted to kind of. I kind of heard like a bell. Uh, and to get that, the easiest thing to do is to kind of um, use the, the envelope filter. So what you're doing with the tail is you're kind of creating two tails. One of the envelope of the filter ending early, and then the second tail being um, the uh, the original frequency. And since the filter is moving up slightly and then it's down, the trick is going to be finding that that sweet spot. Trying to get that that the base one, the envelope one. Oh yeah, I'm a... and now we'll we'll take the op. Thank you. 
the nut landing right here. Maybe move this out of the way so it's easier to see and the stupid autofocus doesn't fuck everything up. Alright. So there it is off. You know, maybe if we're trying to do a bell, no one's gonna play a bell like that, so let's slow it down. Cause that would There you go. Okay, so that's a little better. I'm trying to get rid of that. of them you know it's kind of there but it's it's just it like loses so much and I don't understand what that's about now conversely the uh, the high pass is freaking awesome so you crank that up well, maybe not that high so you're still getting that still getting that swish but all this bass is coming through because of how this silly ass filter works i don't understand i really need to scope it i keep forgetting i think i've said that aloud more than once but i definitely need to so there there you go there's a bell sound kind of i wish it it maybe i could So, this, I like that. I like that. I like I like the sound that we created with that. So I am didn't need to unplug that. So I'm going to just pull that out for now so we don't listen to it. We don't, we don't, we're not, we're not part of its life. Although I did want to get something to drink. Um, but I don't, I'm not going to leave you with that because that's, that's mean, bro. That's, that, that's not that mean. So we, yeah, that was from earlier when we did the whole, um, that was where we were, we were doing Worship the Glitch here. So, so yeah, we took this guy to here and this guy was pulling from the top. sounds trippy.
Yeah, I already hear it. You can. You can do this. that in because I don't care.
That's weird. That's weird, like, so, what I'm hearing here... like double hits. I don't know why I, sh I shouldn't be hearing that. Yeah, that's fucked. Alright. Let's try, let's try a different cable. Oh, oh, maybe it was operator error? I don't know. Let's try this out. I thought I, oh, well, no, I don't really know why it's doing that. That's just, this is not the right cable to have chosen. All right, let's try this again. I heard it. Yeah. Maybe I'm just hearing the double hits from that. So let's go to internal clock. Okay. So it's most likely this 2HB module. It's 
not starting the samples in the right spot. Yeah. So there's a, a loop pitch switch. So the loop works. Yeah, but that's like Donkey Kong. All right. Let's try this. So that's coming on solid like a rock. I believe there's a song about that. Let's try it a little bit slower. Yeah, that's solid too. Man. Wouldn't that be funny? This thing produced garbage. Well, let me, let me turn it off, turn it back on. I didn't expect us to do any um, troubleshooting today. But why not, you know? That's, that's part of life. Okay. Yeah, I can fucking hear it. Yeah, it's like glitching and hitting. It's making multiple put. Excuse me, multiple pulses. Uh, let's see. Let's um. Yeah, it should be. It should be the same thing every time, but it slightly differs, and it's the it's the trigger times because we're coming off the internal clock on this thing. It's not the clock signal. And let's let's do let's do this. Let's try a different pad. Yeah, it's it's all eight. It's well, it's this other eight. Alright, let's try a gate. What are we doing? Yellow? So. Now, check that out. Okay, I think I know. Okay, I think I know what it is. And I'll just work, I'll just fix it off stream because. That makes sense. So, um, sorry, let me, I'll explain what's happening and maybe get rid of this. So, So, I was triggering the uh, I was triggering the samples from the gate out on um, on the on the beat step, and if you could hear, it was kind of like wonky. It wasn't. Um, it would double tap, or it would sound really weird. And at first, I was like, "Oh, it must be the sync." Well, let's eliminate that um, because I've had issues in the past. So it was going off the internal clock, doing the exact same thing. Um, okay, maybe it's the module, the play module. I fed it a different gate signal that was tip top. Uh, I shouldn't say that. Let's just say it was straight out of the damn voltage divider 
rock solid, same sound over and over every quarter note or whatever. So it's not the it's not that. What? And then um, I took the the trigger input from uh, from the play and just patched it into the gate output for the um, from the Beat Step Pro. Fix this camera here. And that, and once I did that, it sounded fantastic. It was rock solid again. So I'm like, oh, the the output on these is 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 too puny, or isn't isn't a long enough. Um, pulse time because like with triggers they have all these different pulse times and, and everyone has a different fucking setting and shit and it's it's weird um, and so this thing can produce different ones I thought I set it to one that was a that was like the default I don't even think I, I tinkered with it because I was like oh whatever it is like 10 milliseconds that sounds fine to me but apparently I need to uh, tinker with that and so and this is a drawback to the beat step pro to change any of those settings it's um it's a big uh you you plug it into your computer and you bring up the software and then you make the changes and you send it out or it's 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 something like that and um I'm not gonna do that on camera. I have to. I'd have to pull things down, anyways, or on stream on camera. I'm not gonna do it today. But definitely uh, gonna have to fix that. And and now I think about it, I wonder if that. I wonder if that was some issues in the past where. I don't know though, this seemed to just happen. I haven't had this, and I'm pretty damn sure I was like, it wasn't doing that, so. I don't know, it's something to tinker with, but again, I don't want to do that on stream. If, if uh, maybe it'd be something to do in the future though. I don't know, that might be cool. Let's see. All right. So uh, I just looked at the timer, and we're coming right up on four hours. Pretty super duper dope, if you ask me. And you didn't, so who cares? Hey. Um. And I'm having an awesome time. I think. Uh, I think. I'm, why don't we? I mean, unless there's any any objections, I say let's go for like one more hour. Um. And then um, I can probably call it a night. I'll probably I'm gonna I'm gonna probably order some food kind of halfway into the stream, so it'll get here when we're done. When I'm done. But uh, yeah, I think another hour would be nice. Oh, oh I got some. Sorry, I'm stretching my back. It's a little, uh, I was whining about it earlier. I'm like hunched over. I stood like yesterday and that was only for like a little over an hour and my, I, I guess I was dancing funny or something. I was, you know, bobbing, but oh, I was killing my knees. So I, I had to get a chair, but the, there's, some real obvious downsides to that. I need to get I need to get one of those cool, um, like like the, the movable booms. I'm, I'm 
I'm using like a, a drum, it's, it's not even like a really good drum stand, it's a tripod. Uh, yeah, yeah, the DR, whatever, who cares. Just, uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's up, man? Uh, just check my book face. Uh, DX Platinum, right? I'm just going to mumble your name. What I think your screen name is pronounced. What's up? So, I I keep talking about bringing a jam in. We were oh yeah well we got dinkered by the donker, but we we figured that out. We can't use any triggers, so we're just stuck with. Uh, oh wait, maybe not. If you guys don't mind. So yeah, yo, 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 okay, sorry here, I'm thinking what we could do, I'm just going to pull that out because it's going to hurt people, so what we can do, I'm going to take the drums out of the mix for now, so we can hear a little bit of sample playback, um, to make it easier though, I'm going to switch the system over so that the um, the FH is the master clock it's gonna make things a little weird so we're gonna disconnect the drums so the drums don't have NMO clock this is the clock for the uh, beat step I'm gonna put it in here I might be wrong. Yes, I was wrong. So that was, uh... Okay, there we go. So the beat step's moving. And, um, so I'm going to switch over to the internal... Um, deal. I'm gonna even pull this out so maybe we can use it. I hang it here. All right. Probably not though. But whatever. So, sorry, I yelled in that mic. So let's let's take us up. So those jungle loops are in the buck sixty range. It's actually written in the file name, but I I don't I don't remember it. So what I was thinking is I could trigger. The loops via um, via the uh, pulse gates because they're, they're it just needs to be on the measure. So we'll, we'll try we'll try this first. Let's see. Oh yeah, you got to be smarter than the gear. I must plug it into the. Oh wait, whoa. Which one do we want? So I like, I love these beats.
The only problem is they're like really short. Let's use that one. I mean, it's it's kind of cheesy. We can change it up if we don't like it. That sounds pretty close. Let's put it on the floor. Good at one. I think it, I was at one sixty. There's the money. Seems like it starts a little too soon. Let me back it up. Back it up a little bit more. Here, I'm gonna back it up until I hear the double hit. Almost, maybe? Okay, there's the double hit. That's at 141. We'll go to 141.2. That's pretty solid. Tighten it up a little bit more to 141.4. Oh, yeah, that's it. There we go. Alright, now we just get to listen to that beat.
so we can try to shift it into some hurdy gates. Plug it into five. I, I'm, I'm just being a dork and like humming it out. Bomb, 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 bomb. So that's what it's doing. I like that. We're gonna go low. Oh yeah, I remember now. We created a bell sound that we tried to.
Yes, thank you. I think that top melody, though, I need to expand it. So it's a really long 64 step deal, so I'm just gonna be lazy and just do alternate where it boomerangs.
think that's a good good way to sign off for today. That was awesome. Um, that really worked out cool. The, uh, let me kill that. All right. That was, that was, that was pretty, pretty fun. Yeah, I'm just going to let it. to it in half time. Oh. Yeah, I think that's about do it for the day. Uh, I think ending on a strong one, that, that last jam, that was that was great. That was a lot of fun. Um, and really using a lot of what we were talking about today, like just playing with the note and the that you put in and then spinning it back and forth a little bit in different ways and we really got that I mean half the time we were just listening to a solid fucking note and writing all this this nice shit in it and then I looked down and I'm like you know this has just been playing like a fucking D the whole time so went in and did like a simple little progression expanded it out a little bit more after a while um and it's just you know big whole notes nothing fancy the the drums were fun though right the uh the jungle drums i uh, i'll have to get it fixed uh i'll fi like i said i'm gonna fix the gate later on but uh yeah the jungle jungle drums are fun i kind of liked writing on that i mean i like writing drum machines and i love this thing and i i swear i miss being able to do some fills or something in there but you know at the end of the day uh it's you know you just we're just we're using beats to write on to write these patches I, I'm um, in a future future one maybe we can get some cooler drum machines or drum modules um, here and, and play with those and then this rather than this girl uh, or maybe even do a whole stream with a particular drum module uh, I don't know that might be a, might be fun but um, definitely definitely gonna gonna do some uh, gotta get the drums are secondary right now. Um, wow, wow. The drums are kind of secondary at the moment. I do have a uh, a drum machine that I'm building right now um, that I'd love love to do on stream once it gets finished and everything. I think it'll be fantastic. It's a little big, so I'll have to figure up something for the cameras, but. Because it's it's almost it's basically it's a 909 um, clone. It's the, the the Nava. I'm probably screwing up the name, but it's a big 909 clone, and so it's it's almost as big as this uh, Euro rack case. It's about maybe a third or a quarter less, but it's a big old honker. And um, but it would be great. You know, we'd have some awesome drums going, and uh, and that you know that thing is a champion. It's so much fun to program on any of those old Roland style drum machines. Uh, you almost get it here, but it, it, there's, I, I hate to be one of those guys, but it's the tactile fun of like slamming your fingers on those buttons. You, you, you feel like a drummer musical. I mean, these are bad, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's like typing on a keyboard or, or typing on a piece of plastic. Anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get that. We might even do like a stream of working on it. I don't know. I, I was thinking about that the other day. I didn't know if anyone would be really into that though, of like just watching me solder with like, you know, no real microscope shots of the of the soldering happening. If I could get like a triscope or something, maybe, or, or get a camera, I can aim at the solder, you know, that might be cool. But I mean, at the end of the day, it might just be fun just to hang out with you, with everybody, and uh, you know, field some questions on uh, soldering and DIY and stuff like that, and just hang out and have some fun. Um, so maybe, maybe we will. We'll see. Right now, like I said, today was fantastic. I had so much fun. It was so great. I'm, I'm thank you to everybody that came in and uh, and lurked and watched for a little bit. Everybody that chatted, and all the new followers, uh, 
Thank you, Third Shoe, um, for uh, for following. And um, I'll, I, I'm going to try to do this tomorrow. I don't want to make any commitments right now. But um, if you if you follow my Facebook um, or um, I'll put this on my Twitter, it's Sid Heresy is my Twitter handle. So it's just the same as everything. And everything's the same. Um, if you want to contact me on that or you just follow that and uh, I'll put put out when uh, when our next when the next stream is going to happen. I'd like to do it tomorrow. So um, maybe the same time. Um, I think consistency would be good. But yeah, let's um, let's shoot for tomorrow. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, we'll definitely do a Sunday stream. Um, I have some stuff that might be coming up on Monday, so I'm uh, probably not gonna stream on Monday. Uh, but let's yeah, let's shoot for tomorrow. Um, and yeah, thanks again, guys. Uh, thanks again for hanging out and um, cat. Good show, thank you, mate. Yeah, um, thanks again for hanging out, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys. Uh, see you guys soon, hopefully. Hopefully tomorrow.